Anin, Sego. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Saturday Smoothie Club. This week we'll be making a pineapple, banana, and coconut smoothie. Summer is here. We're actually pretty much right in the middle of it and it has been hot, hot, and more hot. I personally wish I could lounge at the pool every day to cool off, but I'm busy working and I've got other things to do, so instead I cool off by making smoothies. I think that this is probably my favorite summertime smoothie. It's tropical and easy to make and it is super refreshing. For this recipe we're going to use two cups of frozen pineapple, one banana, half a cup of coconut milk, and half a cup of ice. Okay, I think I've got everything. I've got my banana, I've got my coconut milk, I've got my frozen pineapple, and I grabbed a bag of ice. I also grabbed two measuring cups. We've got one cup, and we've got half a cup. So it looks like we've got everything. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is open up my banana and break it off into small chunks to add into the blender. Typically I would use a frozen banana for this recipe, however I didn't have one frozen in the freezer when I was getting ready to make it, and either way it works just as well. Next, we'll add in two cups of frozen pineapple. Hmm, which do I wanna do next? Let's go with the ice, that way I can reuse this half cup measure. So we've got our half cup of ice. And next we'll work with our coconut milk. The thing about coconut milk is that it will separate inside the can. So the top half will be the fat content and the bottom half will be the thin liquid. You're gonna make, wanna make sure that you shake it up really well just to make sure that everything is mixed well together. Once you've given it a really good shake, you can go ahead and open your can. If you've never used coconut milk before, you may be surprised at what you see when you open up the can. It's very white and it is very, very thick. So we're going to add half a cup of coconut milk. As you can see, there are small chunks. Don't be alarmed. Small chunks in coconut milk definitely do not mean the same thing as small chunks in regular milk. All right, looks like we've got everything in our blender, so pop the top on, and as always, double check the bottom. Pop that up onto your blender, and plug it in if you haven't already. Now, those of you who have been joining us for the last two months will know that I typically like to start the blender out on a slower speed and gradually work my way up and through. This particular smoothie can be rather thick and you may find that you have to stop the blender, um, stick a spoon inside, give it a, a nice stir and then restart until you can get your blender up to its highest speed. Once you can get it to the smoothie speed, just let it blend and do its magic until you find a consistency that you prefer. If you find that your smoothie is still quite thick, you can feel free to add a little more coconut milk to try and thin it out a little more. Mm -hmm. 
This is a smoothie that we prefer to be quite thick, as you can see. And here we have our pineapple, banana, and coconut smoothie. Do you have a favorite smoothie recipe of your own? Share it with us via email and be entered into a draw to win a grocery gift card. Your favorite smoothie recipe may also be featured in one of our upcoming smoothie videos. If you're participating in Hamilton, you can share your smoothie recipe with Jackie at office at nawasa.ca. And if you're joining us from Brantford, you can share your smoothie recipe with me at capc at nawasa.ca. Now, for those of you who are interested, let's take a closer look at some of the nutritional information and fun facts about each of the ingredients we've used today. Pineapples are low in calories, but have an incredibly impressive nutrient profile. The chart you see here is representative of one cup of pineapple chunks. In addition to everything you see here, pineapples also contain trace amounts of vitamins A and K, phosphorus, zinc, and calcium. They're especially rich in vitamin C and manganese, providing 131% and 76% of the daily recommendations, respectively. Vitamin C is essential for growth and development, a healthy immune system, and aiding the absorption of iron from the diet. Meanwhile, manganese is a naturally occurring mineral that aids growth, maintains a healthy metabolism, and has antioxidant properties. The health benefits of pineapple were discussed in detail in a previous smoothie video titled The Strawberry Pineapple Smoothie. So very quickly, the health benefits of pineapple include support for your immune system, protection against cardiovascular disease, support with bone strength, a reduction in inflammation and speeding up healing, help while preventing cancer, support with healthy digestion, and fertility. An individual pineapple can take over two years to grow, although they're usually picked slightly earlier than this. When growing its fruit, the pineapple plant produces over 200 flowers, varying in color from lavender through to light purple and red. The individual scale-like fruits of these flowers then join together to create the pineapple. One pineapple plant produces only one pineapple per season. Pineapples are international symbols of welcome and are a symbolic way of saying you are perfect when presented to someone. The top of a pineapple, after cleaning and drying, can be planted in soil and a new plant will grow. Unlike other tropical plants that grow from seeds, pineapples actually grow from replanting their crown. You can plant the leafy crown and core in moist soil where it will start to root in six to eight weeks. Coconut milk has recently become very popular. It's a tasty alternative to cow's milk that may also provide a number of health benefits. Coconut milk comes from the white flesh of mature brown coconuts, which are the fruit of the coconut tree. The milk has a thick consistency and a rich, creamy texture. Thai and other Southeast Asian cuisines commonly include this milk. It's also popular in Hawaii, India, and certain South American and Caribbean countries. Coconut milk should not be confused with coconut water, which is found naturally in immature green coconuts. Unlike coconut water, the milk does not occur naturally. Instead, solid coconut flesh is mixed with water to make coconut milk, 
which is actually about 50% water. Coconut milk is classified as either thick or thin based on consistency and how much it's processed. If you have thick milk, the solid coconut flesh is finely grated and either boiled or simmered in water. The mixture is then strained through cheesecloth to produce thick coconut milk. After making thick coconut milk, the grated coconut remaining in the cheesecloth is simmered in water. The straining process is then repeated to produce thin coconut milk. Most canned coconut milk contains a combination of thin and thick milk, which is what we are using today. Coconut milk is a high calorie food. About 93% of its calories come from fat, including saturated fats known as medium chain triglycerides or MCTs. Coconut milk is also a good source of several vitamins and minerals. The image you see here demonstrates what vitamins and minerals would be made up in one cup of coconut milk. In addition, some experts believe coconut milk contains unique proteins that may provide health benefits. However, more research is needed. Bananas are extremely healthy and delicious. They contain several essential nutrients and provide benefits for digestion, heart health, and weight loss. Aside from being very nutritious, they are also a highly convenient snack food. Bananas are among the world's most popular fruits. Native to Southeast Asia, they are now grown in many warm parts of the world. Bananas vary in color, size, and shape. The most common type is the Cavendish which is a type of dessert banana. Green when unripe, it yellows as it matures. Bananas contain a fair amount of fiber, as well as several antioxidants. Each banana has only about 105 calories and consists almost exclusively of water and carbs. Bananas hold very little protein and almost no fat. The carbs in green, unripe bananas consist mostly of starch and resistant starch, but as the banana ripens, the starch turns into sugar, such as glucose, fructose, and sucrose. Bananas are rich in pectin, a type of fiber that gives the flesh its spongy structural form. Unripe bananas contain resistant starch which acts like soluble fiber and escapes digestion. Both pectin and resistant starch may moderate blood sugar levels after meals and reduce appetite by slowing the emptying of your stomach. Furthermore, bananas also rank low to medium on the glycemic index, which is a measure from zero to 100 of how quickly foods increase blood sugar levels. The GI value of unripe bananas is about 30, while ripe bananas rank at about 60. The average value of all bananas is 51. This means that bananas should not cause major spikes in blood sugar levels in healthy individuals. However, this may not apply to people with type 2 diabetes, who should probably avoid eating a lot of well-ripened bananas and monitor their blood sugar carefully if they do. Dietary fiber has been linked to many health benefits, including improved digestion. A medium-sized banana has about three grams of fiber, making bananas a fairly good fiber source. Bananas actually contain two main types of fiber, pectin, which decreases as the banana ripens, and then there's resistant starch, which is found in unripe bananas. Resistant starch escapes digestion and ends up in your large intestine where it becomes food for the beneficial bacteria in your gut. No study has directly tested the effects of bananas on weight loss. However, bananas do have several attributes that should make them a weight loss friendly food. For starters, 
bananas have relatively few calories. The average banana has just over 100 calories, yet it is also very nutritious and filling. Eating more fiber from vegetables and fruits, like bananas, has repeatedly been linked to lower body weight and weight loss. Potassium is a mineral that is essential for heart health, especially blood pressure control. Despite its importance, few people get enough potassium in their diet. Bananas are a great dietary source of potassium. One medium-sized banana contains 9% of the required daily intake. A potassium-rich diet can help lower blood pressure, and people who eat plenty of potassium have up to a 27% lower risk of heart disease. Fruits and vegetables are excellent sources of dietary antioxidants, and bananas are no exception. They contain several types of potent antioxidants, including dopamine and catechins. These antioxidants are linked to many health benefits, such as a reduced risk of heart disease and degenerative illness. However, it is a common misunderstanding that the dopamine from bananas acts as a feel-good chemical in your brain. In reality, dopamine from bananas does not cross the blood-brain barrier. It simply acts as a strong antioxidant instead of altering hormones or mood. Resistant starch is a type of indigestible carb found in unripe bananas and other foods, which functions like soluble fiber in your body. As a rule of thumb, you can estimate that the greener the banana, the higher its resistant starch content. On the other hand, yellow, ripe bananas contain lower amounts of resistant starch and total fiber, but proportionally higher amounts of soluble fiber. Both pectin and resistant starch offer appetite-reducing effects and increase the feeling of fullness after meals. Insulin resistance is a major risk factor for many of the world's most serious diseases, including type 2 diabetes. Several studies reveal that 15 to 30 grams of resistant starch per day may improve insulin sensitivity by 33 to 50 percent in as few as four weeks. Unripe bananas are a great source of resistant starch. Therefore, they may help improve insulin sensitivity. However, the reason for these effects is not well understood, and not all studies agree on the matter. More studies should be conducted on bananas and insulin sensitivity. Potassium is essential for blood pressure control and healthy kidney function. As a good dietary source of potassium, bananas may be especially beneficial for maintaining healthy kidneys. One 13-year study in women determined that those who ate bananas two to three times per week were 33% less likely to develop kidney disease. Other studies note that those who eat bananas four to six times a week are almost 50% less likely to develop kidney disease than those who don't eat this fruit. Bananas are often referred to as the perfect food for athletes, largely due to their mineral content and easily digested carbs. Eating bananas may help reduce exercise-related muscle cramps and soreness, which affect up to 95% of the general population. The reason for the cramps is largely unknown, but a popular theory blames a mixture of dehydration and electrolyte imbalance. However, research gives mixed findings about bananas and muscle cramps. While some studies find them helpful, others find no effects. That said, bananas do provide excellent nutrition before, during, and after endurance exercise. Not only are bananas incredibly healthy, they're also one of the most convenient snack foods around. Bananas make a great addition to yogurt, cereal, and like today, smoothies. You can even use them instead of sugar in your baking and cooking. Bananas rarely contain any pesticides or pollutants due to their thick protective peel. And they're incredibly easy to eat and transport. They're usually well tolerated and easily digested. They simply have to be peeled and eaten. It doesn't get much easier than that. Now I'm not sure if any of you picked up on this earlier, but bananas contain around 70% of water which also means that they can float in water. 
Banana plants are a type of a herb, not a tree. If you use cling wrap on the stem of a banana, it can last up to five days longer. Now this I found really interesting. A single banana is called a finger, and a bunch of bananas is called a hand. I'm not sure about you, but when I go to the grocery store, I've always just figured I buy a bunch of bananas. And lastly, a person with an allergy to latex can have a reaction from eating a banana. I know, as always, I just covered a lot of information in a really short period of time. My hope, however, continues to be that you found this information to be interesting as well as beneficial and that you'll continue to experiment with these items in your smoothies moving forward. Jimmy Glitch for joining me this week. And until next time, Ona. Oh, no.